explain the procedure for investigation under the code of crpc the procedure for investigation under the code of crpc is as follows filing of an fir an information of a cognizable or non cognizable offense given under section 154.1 of crpc is commonly known as first information report it is the earliest and the first information of a cognizable offense recorded by an officer in charge of a police station it sets the criminal law in motion and marks the commencement of the investigation which ends up with the formation of opinion under section 169 or 170 crpc as the case may be and forwarding of a police report under section 173 crpc preliminary inquiry report section 157 of the crpc provides with the provisions relating to preliminary inquiry method according to this after receiving the information about the crime the officer in charge of the police station is empowered to investigate the case and to send the report of the same to the magistrate who would then take cognizance of the case the police need to go to the crime scene to collect evidence and arrest the suspect if needed they can also deny investigation on the ground that the case involves some non cognizable offenses which cannot be investigated without the order of the magistrate if the investigation officer does not find any reasonable grounds to investigate then he is not bound to investigate then he can inform the reasons for the same to the magistrate investigation the location of the crime the police officer proceeds to the spot ascertaining facts and circumstances of the case the purpose is to identify the offender and proceed him for trial so as to serve him with punishment as per the provisions of the code collecting evidence and interrogating the relevant person this includes examination of persons concerned and reducing the statement to writing search and seizure of places and things respectively considered necessary finding the suspect discovery and arrest of the suspect formation of opinion as to whether there is a case for trial and taking necessary steps accordingly sending a report to the magistrate section 158 a report is sent to the magistrate which is called the police report it is sent by the superior police officer so as to make the magistrate aware that a particular case being investigated by a police officer the main objective of sending a report is to enable the magistrate to control the investigation and give directions if required under section 159 of the code the magistrate under section 159 has been empowered if it is necessary after receiving the report to the direct investigation or to conduct himself or direct him subordinate magistrate to hold the preliminary inquiry attendance of witnesses the police officer making the investigation is empowered under section 160 to em- require the attendance of any person as a witness who is acquainted by the, with the facts and circumstances of the case examination of witness any police officer who is in charge of the investigation or any other officer who is acting on the request of an officer in charge shall and is empowered to examine a witness or person who is acquainted or aware of the facts and circumstances of the case put before him section 167 of the code confirms power on police to examine witnesses the statement of witnesses are important as they can make a person guilty or innocent the person who are being investigated are expected and bound to answer truly all the questions relating to such cases put before them they are not bound to truly answer the questions which would expose them to a criminal charge or any other charge after the examination the police officer making the investigation shall reduce the number of statements given by the person in the course of the examination and if done so he shall keep a separate record of the same he is not bound to reduce the statements into writing but it is required that he do so recording of statements or confession by magistrate section 164 empowers the magistrate to record the statements or the confession made by any person in during the whole investigating process or before the commencement of the inquiry or trial if someone is not wanting to make the confession the, man, the magistrate cannot force him to do so the confession needs to be purely voluntary acceptability of evidence the confession recorded under section 164 can be used as evidence against the person who has made the confession it is upon the court to measure all the factors pertaining to the evidence and then consider it the confession should be presented before the court in its entirety to decide whether it is useful or not probing of property or any place important in investigation the power to search any place or property is given to the police under section 165 of crpc a police officer conducting the investigation or a subordinate officer under his order can search any place or property which holds any interest in the case for searching a place the police are required to have a search warrant issued by the magistrate if the police of the property to be searched is located outside the territory of india then the magistrate can write a letter asking for permission to search that place from the authority of that area the police officers are required to give a proper reason in writing for the search along with the materials that they are searching for after the completion of the search they are supposed to send the report to the of the same to the magistrate so that he can inform the same to the owner of the property procedure to be followed on completion of investigation section 169 to section 173 on completion of the investigation the following procedure is to be followed 
release of accused when evidence is deficient when there is not sufficient evidence and reasonable grounds to justify the forwarding of the accused to the magistrate the police officer shall release him on him executing a bond with or without sureties and may direct him to appear without before the magistrate when required cases to be sent to the magistrate when evidence sufficient when the police officer has sufficient evidence and has reasonable grounds he shall forward the accused to the magistrate so that the magistrate can take cognizance of, of the offence and try the accused or commit him for trial if the offence is valuable the accused shall be given security and be released on bail only to appear before the magistrate when required and for his day to day attendance before the magistrate diary of the proceedings in any investigation section 172 this section relates to the contents of a case diary which every police officer making an investigation has to maintain the object of this section is to enable the magistrate to know what was the day to day information by a police officer who was investigating the case oral statements of the witness should not be recorded in this case diary this diary may be used at a trial or inquiry not as evidence but as to assist the court in proceeding with the case report of police on completion of the investigation final report of a police officer after the completion of the investigation is to be sent to the magistrate under section 173 this report is generally called a charge sheet or chalan or completion report closer report the closer report is the one which it is state is that there is not enough evidence to prove that the offense has been committed by the accused once the closer report is filed before the magistrate he may accept and the report case has closed direct a further investigation into the case issue a notice to the first important as he is he is the only person who can challenge the report or he may directly reject the closure and take cognizance of the case